Welcome back uh, once again. Uh, this is your news at uh, 10 uh, news tonight. And of course, uh, let us delve into the bulletin. But first, though, let's look at the top stories. Hundreds turn out to participate in the ecumenical way of the cross. Police to sell its undistilled dis fixed winning aircraft. Uganda developed new vaccine to fight a deadly feast. And in sports, Nairobi's rewards Golden Rugby winnings a team with cash. My name is Patricia Lukoma Mpango and we continue with news tonight at 10. The President of the Republic of Uganda, His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni and the First Lady and Minister for Education and Sports, Janet Kataham Museveni, will be spending the Easter holidays in their country home in Rakitura. It's Jacob. Olanya. May we clap for that. If you follow what we have been saying, the country will move very, very fast because we have got everything here. But the main problem has been what is to be done and why. You find people doing things which, which are not answering that question. What is the correct thing to do? We have told you commercialization of agriculture. The spotlight is on speaker Jacob Olana. But within that same spotlight are people who personify those qualities that made him to be a celebrated figure. In reality, we are celebrating the potential of Jacob Olanya. I don't think we got the best of him. And that's why the nation mourned. As you mentor the, the, the young people, it's, it is very important that you get this story of the human race, so that they get it clear and know where we belong. I think the starting point in mentoring, you must get an accurate understanding of the human story of society and, and the nature. The theme of today's ceremony resonates very well with what you are known for in the African Union, i.e the champion of integration. Mr. Odrok Rawabogo and his group for, re for remembering to do this and following it up. Uh, I normally support them, but they are the ones who thought of the idea and pushed it. So I really thank them because if you don't recognize people who do well, then you let down society. Because if the ones who do well are not remembered and appreciated, you may create a situation where people don't bother. Let me also to thank you for standing with the family of the late Jacob Olanya, both while he was still alive and when he passed on. Our father's legacy is one of integrity, of reconciliation, of institutionalism, of Ubuntu, and of family. Okay. Can we make this quick, people?
Mr. President, thank you for allowing me to stand for long. I'm reading the next one, and then we'll be done. The next set of people to give, I'll mention the person who will... Who will. Congratulations, Moses Matovu. Your Excellency, then you resume your seats. Huh? Those who received awards only, if you just just make your way forward, I read and resume my seat. The next one is a distinguished scholar and educator who made good contribution in the field of education. Thank you. Congratulations, all of you. Thank you, Mr. President, for the picture. Let's resume our, our seats. Now, that was the story about uh, the, the, the leadership and mentorship awards where the president, uh, His Excellency President Yuri Museveni, said that people who contribute uh, to the development of a society should be remembered and appreciated. But rather, I, I had asked for the, 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 the Rakitura uh, story where the president of the Republic of Uganda, His Excellency President Yuri Kagutem Seveni plus the First Lady uh, will be spending some Easter holidays at their country home in Rakitura. So now let's have that story. the Easter that is just around uh, the corner and uh, we appreciate that uh, something like that can be shared with us uh, here on uh, you, the national broadcast. Now the First Lady and Minister of Education, uh, Janet, Mrs. Janet Museveni thanked the European Union and its member states for the new gender for development program in Uganda and for their support to the government's endeavors in the education sector. The EU-funded G4DO program aims uh, at supporting education with a focus on adolescent girls and eliminate gender-based violence plus promote sexual and reproductive health. Let's hear more in this report. In the same direction. The EU-funded G4DU program aims to support education with a focus on adolescent girls, eliminate gender-based violence, and promote sexual and reproductive health. This builds on the EU-UN Spotlight Initiative, which was launched in 2020 by His Excellency President Museveni. The program will be implemented by UNICEF, Enabel, and KFW, in approximately 200 primary and secondary schools located in selected districts from three sub-regions, Acholi, Lango, and West Nile. Mrs. Mseveni said that having the G4D program well laid out would be very helpful so that all stakeholders are conversant with what exactly is going to happen in the 200 and selected schools. How many schools, therefore, will be where, which ones, uh, for refugees alone and which ones are for refugee hosting communities so that all of us are very clear where this program is going and when we need to monitor we know where to go so it will be very very helpful for us at the ministry and we can have monitoring groups to continue to go in and out to know what is happening at any one time. We are building a global community that, that must really be able to work together, to depend on each other, 
and to trust each other so that when we say we are going to do this, we do it. We don't talk about it, plan it, write papers, do everything, and then for a reason that shouldn't uh, really be a problem, stop a project like that. So I am hoping that uh, we will hear some very good news in the very near future about GPE. In his submission, EU Ambassador Jean Sadek stated that GIF4DU program is a team Europe initiative where the European Union and its member states pull their resources for greater impact and coordination. The D4DU will address in a comprehensive manner some of the key determinants to adolescents' girls' education and their transition from primary to secondary, including water and sanitation infrastructures in school, quality of education, life skills training, and solutions to address financial barriers for girls' transition to secondaries. UNICEF will receive uh, a little bit over 80 million uh, euros, which is probably around 20 million dollars. And it will allow us to continue our partnership with your ministry in two important areas, all of them related to the uh, adolescents, uh, girls and boys. Mm. The first area is the retention of enrollment for both boys and girls, but with more focus on adolescent girls. So we want to see girls completing a full cycle of seven years of primary education mm. and continuing to at least S4. The GIF4D program will be partially implemented by Annabel, and additional funding from Belgium will also support schools in the Renzori and Psoga regions. Reporting for UBC, Baguma William. Believers in Jesus Christ have been urged to shun away from immoral behavior and practices so that the resurrection of Jesus Christ finds them cleansed. This message was delivered by the parish priest of Our Lady of Africa and Buya Catholic Parish, Reverend Francis James Patrick Jumba, during the Way of the Cross service. Christians around the world have attended the prayers for the ecumenical way of the cross as a sign of remembrance of the suffering of Jesus Christ who died for mankind. At Our Lady of Africa, Mbuya Catholic Parish, the Christians were led by the parish priest Reverend Father James Patrick Jumba. They moved to different places that included Mbuya, Nakawa, Chinawataka, and Bugolobi, among others. <laughs> Along the way, they were joined by other people such as Boda Boda riders who committed themselves to the Passion of Christ. Good Friday, these ladies are not shedding tears of joy but soul after meditating and remembering the pain Jesus went through. Lord, save me with your cross today. Let the angel who is going to receive you receive me too in the kingdom of God, Lord. <laughs> Lord, I'm sorry. I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sinful. I sinned in front of you, Lord. There were a few unlucky ones who inadvertently shared Jesus' suffering for allegedly disturbing the worshippers. Stay away! No! To know how unique the way of the cross is, many tightened the lessons of their sandals ready to cover more distance. Many challenges also we face in our families. There are many traumas we face in our families. This year's ecumenical way of the cross was attended by a variety of people, regardless of age, gender and health status. <laughs> Nebirunji Vionabian Korea, 
The station you go through, uh, you see yourself changing inwardly. And that is the essence of being a Christian. I love my Catholic faith because of this. Because it gives me an opportunity to see. I participate in the suffering of our Christ Lord Jesus. I see it physically and that's it. The burden by man is seen as outweighed Jesus and Dennis is what his imitator in this story lost the ground, collapsing several times. <laughs> He is helped by a well-wisher who acts in position of Simon of Siren as it is revealed in the scriptures to carry the cross. I small here, Kapuni Gana Kualida. Naya went to K of Sala of Gavakuti said, Kubango Abuja or Kuviram attended Nabuzuna. Gavaju Kiri Nyario, Kuroko and Tikirako Yezu of Sala. Jesus, Zua in this video, is being dragged by soldiers to Golgoth where he is subjected to unbearable provoking and insults. If you're the king of the Jews, then drink it. Drink. This place at our lead of Africa and Bia resonates with a skull where he was mistreated and died. The parish priest of Our Lady of Africa, Mbia Catholic Parish, Reverend Father James Patrick Jumba, urged the Christians to reflect on their lives. It is a good Friday because on this day we are all saved by the death and the suffering of Jesus Christ. We receive we want our sins to be crucified with Jesus so that we may be able also to resurrect with him. As we journey on this issue of the cross, we find a number of challenges, difficulties along the way to remind us the challenges and difficulties we find on our way as we journey to heaven. God gives us the courage and the grace to face them. Dennis is the one who brings up a picture of Jesus carrying the cross and enduring the suffering. Says that the great love and faith gave him the courage. For me to act as Jesus, this is my second time. Uh, I started last year. Yeah, so this is my second time and I'm, re I'm, I'm really feeling good and enjoying serving the Lord. Um, I was inspired by the life of Jesus Christ that he lived before and according to the scripture, scriptures that I've been following, his life was so amazing, he was a humble person and I really admired. So when I got that example, uh, that opportunity here at the parish, I, ha I had to run up and to take up this opportunity because I wanted to exercise it more by doing it physically. So another reason as to why I did this is because of my faith that I have for Jesus Christ. The faith that I have drived me, so uh, I had to attach all my strings of effort to make these things happen. It is really amazing and uh, it is a blessing first of all. I feel so happy uh, to be in the, to follow, to do the, the footsteps of Jesus Christ because in this I'm preaching the gospel to the people who are my parishioners here at the parish and wherever we have passed. Christians are expected to not lose hope, but instead strengthen their faith amidst the suffering. I'm Ivan Juko and Fiona Atuhaire for UBC. Christian Council has warned government and public servants against acts of corruption, which they say negatively impact all areas of the economy and hinder the development of the nation. Uganda Joint Christian Council is not happy with the ongoing trend of bad leadership that is characterized by corruption, land grabbing, and untamed environmental degradation. Through their joint communique, members of the UJCC hinted on the merits of transparency as a key tenant of good leadership that should be exercised by all, especially those in government. 
According to the NRA stroke NRM 10 point program, corruption was one of the vices to be fought in Uganda. Unfortunately, corruption is persisting and widespread throughout the country. Let us always show kindness to the suffering, the persecuted, the defenseless people, even when this is going to interfere with our own, our own plans and the desires as it did with Simon of Cyrene. The chairman, Uganda Episcopal Conference, Bishop Anthony Zua, asked Christians to examine themselves and their lifestyles as they prepare to celebrate the resurrection of Christ come Sunday. What is it that I need to lose in my life so that I can rise with him come this coming Easter Sunday? Is it a life of endless pleasure that I need to lose? Is it a life of corruption that I need to lose? Is it a practice of land grabbing that I need to stop? Is it a life that is prone to violence that I need to lose? Is it a life of drugs and too much alcohol that I need to lose? You can add more questions to those which I have posed. Meanwhile, government has been lauded for the peace and tranquility across the country. Citing the ongoing political and civil turmoil in the Gaza Strip, Ukraine and the DRC among others, the Archbishop, Church of Uganda, Dr. Samuel Stephen Kazimba Mugalu, asked Ugandans to thank God for this and not take it for granted. There are many countries which are not going to celebrate Easter in peace. For example, Democratic Republic of Congo, Burkina Faso, Mali, the Gaza Strip, Ukraine, to mention but a few. We give special thanks to the President, His Excellency Yoel Kaguta Museven, and the armed forces who are working hard to maintain peace in this country. Unique about this year's ecumenical prayers, however, was the fact that the men of God unanimously spared time to advocate for environmental conservation to shield Ugandans against the harsh effects of climate change. We love ourselves so much that we are willing and ready to destroy the environment as long as we get what we want with the total disregard of future posterity. It is the duty of each one of us to protect our environment. Stop littering. The issue of land grabbing was highlighted as a factor responsible for widening the gap between the haves and the have-nots. Leaders want government to deliberately pay attention to the cries of many Ugandans who have been pushed to insolvency by the so-called powerful individuals grabbing their land. The victims of land grabbing are the poor who cannot defend themselves through hiring lawyers or security to defend their land. May the rights of both the rich and the poor concerning land be protected equally. Representing government at the event was the State Minister for Kampala, Kabuye Chofato Gabye. Love starts with us from our homes, families, neighbors, then the entire community, and eventually the country. I therefore call upon all of you to love your families, just as your government has loved you and gave you capital through the parish development model. The prayers of this year's ecumenical public way of the cross were held under the theme, You shall love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. Dokas Kmono, UBC News. Now, according to the Bible, the Son of God has flagged and ordered uh, to carry the cross on which we, he would eventually be crucified and put to death. Father Del Gracias Chibi, a priest in PJ District, says Good Friday 
is observed during a week that is holy and part of Pasco Tridem. <laughs> Many Christians pray the stations of the cross on Good Friday when Christ died on the cross. Father Chibi states that good in this context refers to a day or season observed as holy by the church. Because on Friday that's when Jesus and you had everything and you had the cross died for us on the cross so it's a holy but against good because hadn't he died for us on the cross then everything would be meaningless so it's a good friday because it was good for us who believe in christ it was good for us that was the, so dying on the cross they say it's accomplished i want you to know that it is a mystery it is a mystery we call it good friday because it is the anchor it is the foundation of who we are as Christians. But to us Christians, it is a revelation, it is a good thing that we were saved. Good Friday always lands on a Friday right before Easter and just like Lent, Christians recognize this day through fasting, abstinence and prayer. Amen. You know, he is suffering. It's because it is on this day that he presented his life. He gave himself as a ransom. First Timothy chapter 2 beginning at verse 3. That he gave himself as a ransom. Even if there was a lot of pain, even if there was a lot of agony, even if there was rejection from his very own, to us as Christians, we see it as a revelation to give us the victory that we have desired. The Pharisees couldn't understand it. The, the Sadducees couldn't understand it. The Romans who crucified my Lord could not understand. It was a mystery to them. Five. That's the confirmation of God's love. And this one he did by letting his son die for us on the cross. That's why this Holy Friday is Good Friday. Because this is Good Friday, that's the beginning point of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good Friday is above all the day in which Christians recognize Christ's ultimate love and sacrifice. Brian Tumwinebiaruhanga, UBC News. And over to Masindi, Christians in Masindi district converged to Kamunyong Catholic Church in Masindi municipality at 8 a.m. for a procession commemorating Jesus Christ's last moment before he was crucified. For Christians in Masindi district, marking Good Friday started with songs of praise. They hailed the name of Jesus. The procession was led by Reverend Father Biaruhanga Alozius with a visiting Reverend Father Hendrix Mambwe of Tanzania. It started at Kamuyonga Parish through Masindi Municipality, a trek of about five kilometers. The head of the light, Benjamin Biarugaba, carried the cross with the purpose to dedicate Uganda to the Lord. In the meantime, the Christians sang the song, Lord, I want to be with Christ in my heart. The cross has been a very graceful exercise because it marks almost the end, the climax of our Lenten season. Reverend Father Lozias Viarhanga told Christians to uphold Christian values that they have been strengthened during fasting. How for kind of this of the cross, a very important prayer and we have been the entire Masin district, gathered here at St. Judy County Parish Hall from Kamunyonga, yeah. and with the Reverend Father Henry Smangwe, all the way from Tanzania, who has come to say, let me go to see how things move in Uganda. Father, you are most welcome. The visiting priest from Tanzania, Reverend Father Henrik Smangwe, assured Christians that they have had an important tool, and that's prayer. Abiona Francisco. UBC News. Now, as we move away from the way of the cross, Land Minister Judith Nabakova has witnessed handover of 400 land titles 
in Kirohura district with a call to the beneficiaries and local authorities to consider titling government land as a move to guard it against encroachers. The Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Youth Navakoba, has been in Kirohura district presiding the handover of certificates of customary ownership of land. <laughs> Wow. The recipients of the over 400 titles are from the two sub counties of Kanyareru and Santa. <laughs> This project is running under the systematic land adjudication with full support from the government of Uganda and development partners. His Excellency guided and allowed the Ministry of Lands to take on this land program under SEDEN. It is a World Bank funded project. It is operating in the districts of Chirubura, Ibanda, Rampara. We are so happy that we are delivering. Of course, we are running out of time because of the technicalities that have been surrounding the problem. But right now we are energized and we know that we have to deliver on these titles. Mr. Naikawa argued the beneficiaries to desist from land fragmentation and also guard against encroachment on government land. I have asked the chairperson, the cow and the respective land boards and area land committees to ensure that wherever there is land belonging to government, it should be surveyed off and titled. Because we have these services in the districts, they were centralized. Each district has a district planner, each district has a district staff surveyor, they have the area land committees and the land board. Meaning that those respective technical institutions in a district can be in position to survey, make an application form, once a file is complete and endorsed by the district land board, then titles will be processed at our EMZO in Imbarara. The ceremony was attended by, among others, Nyabushozi County Member of Parliament, Wilson Kajwenje, the Kirhura District Manu Member of Parliament, Giovanni Swenduru, among others. Honorable Minister, we are appreciating you for not being a minister who sits in the office and doesn't go to the field. We thank you. We have reasons. But you know, when these people are allocated land, we tried to oppose until these land titles got expired. So even if we have lead now, they will expire. So how can we get the people titles? Now, Uganda has flagged off a 24,000 liters consignment of avocado crude oil extract worth 750 million shillings. The crude oil extracted from Haas and local avocado is the sixth consignment departed to Europe by Balaji Agro Industries Limited, located in Butalango, Nakaseke. They should have been more than one container a month if we had enough production of Hassover cake. A consignment worth 750 million shillings of crude avocado oil has been dispatched to Italy from Balaji Industries in Nakaseke district. The 24,000 litre crude oil container of Hass and local avocado extract is the sixth consignment since the inception of Balaji Agro Industries. Our capacity is still growing, but since we started, I can assure you that we are working under capacity because of lack of has. Established in 2020, Balaji Agrofarm embarked on avocado oil processing in October 2023 using local avocado and some imported varieties from Kenya and also making other products. In just five months of avocado oil extraction, Balaji, one of the five local factories extracting avocado oil, has exported six consignments of avocado oil. Every day we crush around uh, 40 tons and those 40 tons is not only us we have uh, fuete and we have also jumbos which are coming in small quantities 
With its high processing capacity, Balaji is currently operating under low fruit processing due to the shortage of avocado supply. To meet its processing demand, Balaji Agro Industries Limited has embarked on growing their own orchard to address the shortage gaps. We have on ground 380 acres of hearse. He says in two years to come, their plan is to increase their orchard in acreage from 380 acres to two square miles. We have two square miles of land here and this is going to us, all of it. I'm expecting by 2026 also, us as Balaji to have covered the whole two square miles with us, only us. The Executive Director National Agricultural Advisory Services Dr. Samuel Mogasi argues Ugandans to take advantage of the government's program on high-value crops. He was represented by the head of communication, Khadija Nakakande. As government, this gives us courage that actually what we are doing has the prospect of earning this country for an exchange, but also putting income in the pockets of our farmers. It's an assurance to our people, those who have planted the house of Akedo, those who are pl planning to start up orchards of Hasova Kedo, that actually the market for their fruits exists. Currently, government through NADS is running a program of supporting farmers to uphold the growth of high-value crops. Susan Naonga reporting for EBC TV. Thank you very much there, Susan Naonga. Moving ahead, the Chinese ambassador to Uganda, His Excellency is Zhang Lengzhong has briefed the country on the latest outcomes of the China-Uganda Practical Cooperation. The ambassador highlighted new projects that are to strengthen development cooperation with Uganda targeting social and economic welfare of the local communities. Chinese ambassador to Uganda has introduced the latest outcomes of the China-Uganda friendly practical cooperation. While briefing the media, Ambassador Li Zong pointed out areas where the two countries have benefited. We signed the uh, agreement to allow uh, free duty uh, export of Uganda products to China. Uh, for example, before uh, Uganda coffee uh, export to China needed to pay the duties uh, the, uh, when, when the coffee uh, were exported to China. Uh, uh, after uh, this uh, effective, if effectiveness of, of this uh, uh, duty-free duty -free agreement, Uganda coffee uh, enjoyed uh, zero duty uh, uh, treatment uh, in Chinese market. And I, I have learned that uh, Uganda coffee export to China has increased uh, uh, due to the, uh, these policies. In the area of investment, the ambassador encouraged Chinese business communities to engage in agro industry, ICT and oil and gas because such investments present opportunities to drive inclusive growth that will help address value addition concerns. China's finance focuses on how to better the technical mechanism to ensure the project's own sustainability and their intended social economic benefits for upgrading local industries and improving people's livelihoods. China committed to continue strengthening development cooperation within the country by launching more projects to benefit communities. The initiative on supporting Africa's industrialization, the plan for China supporting Africa's agricultural modernization, and the plan for China-Africa cooperation on talent development. All these fields are actually the focus, are, the, uh, are meeting the needs urging the needs of the African countries, uh, namely uh, industrializations, just as uh, in Uganda, uh, agricultural sectors and also the talent, uh, talent trainings and uh, development.
several Chinese companies disclosed a number of achievements and contributions to the country. Here in Uganda, CCC has contributed through infrastructure development and one of the various projects we have executed, as you can see on your screens, that is the very common road, I think everyone here has written that road, the Entebbe Expressway. As seen of Uganda, we are very enthusiastic about environmental protection and social development. Seen of Uganda as a responsible company, we follow the high standards and industry best practices as we do our business. And with that, we interpret low carbon neutrality in all the works that we do. Ambassador Liz Hong is expected to tour and assess progress in the investment at Kingfisher Oil Field in Hoima on 1st April 2024. Lydia Chomkama and Juma Samba, UBC News. Now, recently upgraded road infrastructure has changed the faces of eastern cities of Mbale, Soroti, and Busia municipality. This is all thanks to the Uganda support to municipal infrastructure development that has seen several roads rehabilitated. Mbale is one of the oldest cities in eastern Uganda, housing most of the regional government offices. Its strategic location makes it a potential one-stop center trading hub for business operators from Bukedi, Elgon, Busoga and Teso sub-regions. This makes the upgrade of the road infrastructure in the city extremely important. <laughs> When we started the projects, we had issues of uh, project-affected persons where you have some people's properties crossing over to um, some sections of the road corridor. Um, however, through engagements with them, we called for meetings with the local leaders, that's the LOC ones. We have what we call this, the City Development Forum. Uh, which has been very, very cooperative and very, very helpful. We brought uh, the people together, we talked to them about uh, the project, we showed them the designs of the project, but also told them about the, the, the positive, you know, impacts of us constructing the roads. And I'm telling you, the people of Mbale responded very, very positively. Those that had their wall fences, extending into the road, just voluntarily broke their fences down and moved away from the road corridor to allow for the works to move on very smoothly. It is such cooperation from the community that has seen success in the construction and upgrading of Naboa Road and Cathedral Avenue. An example that I can give is along this road where we are standing, Kokonjeru Terrace. If you just look this side, on this side, this person just broke their wall and extended off the road corridor. And it allowed for the roadworks to progress uh, very, very successfully. Apparently, our, we have been running two contracts concurrently, Usmid and uh, Cluster 3. At the same time, Cluster 2. With cluster 2, that's Naboro and Cathedral, we have achieved 100%. We are even completing the LOP period and the, the contractor to hand over the, the roads by the end of this month. Under cluster 3, where we are constructing 3.75 kilometers, we have so far at a physical progress of 87, almost completing. So we expect by the end of March, we shall have achieved 100%. Similar to these milestones are what the people of Busia municipality are expressing gratitude over. Uh, it is now enabling 
even the people who were persisting on road to now enter the market. And uh, through that, the revenue base is definitely increasing. The program has improved on the beauty of the town. As you can see, our park, the lights have been raised up so far. The roads are in good shape. And the business are also going very well. We have just installed the security lights. And uh, the security lights, you know, Busia is not a sleeping town. People work past midnight. So these security lights are helping us in terms of people who move at night. But also people who do business on the streets during the night. They are able now to work without uh, being insecure. Roads like Wanyamaboni, Ntaka, and Busia Secondary School have been rehabilitated and renovated. Amin Sadiq Agele is the mayor for Busia Municipal Council. But I thank the people of Busia. More so, on Ikaka Road, they accepted to remove the encumbrance on the road without paying them. People of Wanyama Boni Road, they accepted. That's why I say people of Busia Municipal Council on the first phase of Usmid, they played a big role. Over 150 kilometers away sits Soroti City, another beneficiary. Just like Mbale, it benefited right from the first phase in 2014. This has seen not only movement improve, but also criminality reduce. Being an urban center, the issue of insecurity has also been a big challenge. Now, when this project came up with lighting, street lighting, it enabled, first of all, visibility through the cameras has been enabled because now the the, the cameras are now functional. The lighting has enabled the cameras to be functional. And then, but also, uh, now one night you can move freely, both day and night, because there's no fear of darkness. So that's why we're saying the project has had a very serious impact. About 6.2 kilometers of roads were upgraded in Soroti City in the first phase. This came to extent with subsidiary infrastructure in drainage and pedestrian walkways in the next phase. Daniel Christopher Kawesi is the town clerk for Soroti City Council. The sidewalks have also helped to reduce on the number of accidents, especially with Boda Boda, and the revenue has also taken an upward trajectory. So as a city, we are very grateful for the project and would wish that more money could be added to, to, to work on other roads. This opinion in having more of such projects is shared by other local government leaders. The mayor for Busia Municipal Council and the RCC Soroti City are some of them. I'm requesting the government of Uganda. Busia is the face of Uganda. And let them say Busia to be the first priority. We pray that a second phase is reintroduced so that we open more roads and lit more roads so that we have both security assured and also economic activities in the city. The answers to these pleas lie in the efforts that government has embarked on. It seeks another phase of additional funding to use mid, which if successful will run from 2025 to 2030. Henry Okrut, UBC. Thank you very much there, Henry Accrued. Now, Uganda police has decided to sell its fixed-wing aircraft after failure to provide effective services in Uganda due to lack of tarmac runaways. 
in the most parts of the country. Let's hear more in this report. Uh, without, fo without following procedure, the right procedure and the PPDA laws, so we've come here to let the public know. The consideration to sell Uganda police forces fixed wing aircraft is based on luxurious design of the plane, making it inappropriate to the Ugandan infrastructure. Since its procurement six years ago, the plane has only covered a distance of 117 hours. Requirement of replacing expired parts or at, uh, of 100,000 uh, 100, US dollars. So you can see all those and yet we have not been using. And this is the only aircraft on the African continent. So getting other spares also makes it very hard. Therefore, the replacement of the fixed-wing aircraft will provide the police air wing with an additional operational and effective crime-fighting tool. So far, several types of aircraft have been reviewed with manufacturers and in total consideration of the aircraft's possible loads and operations of the Uganda police. As we conclude, it is the considered option. Apart from being unfit for untamarked runways, the plane requires mandatory expensive maintenance. I cannot land on a maram runway. It lands on a paved runway like this one here, asphalt runway, tamak runway, because of its limitation is uh, the, 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 the engines of this aircraft are so delicate that if you land on, on dust, it affects those propellers. Usually, usually the tamak runway are not smooth as as the tamako runway. Maramo runways can, can have potholes and whatever. So as as it bounces, as it bounces in the in the in the in those potholes, it can those propellers can easily touch on the runway and they break them. That now will cause a hazard. The police management has already received the selling approval from the Minister of Internal Affairs following procurement procedures. So in addition the aircraft parts very expensive the nature and category of luxury. So the Honorable Minister was briefed. The police management has valued the current state of the plan with the depreciation in mind at 4 million US dollars. Uh, a composite uh, board of survey on the 19th of October 2022 inspected the aircraft. Inspected the aircraft and valued it at US dollars four million two hundred and seventy one thousand. The replacement of this fixed wing aircraft is expected to enhance the capacity of police air wing. However, the question remains whether police made necessary survey before the procurement of this luxurious fixed wing aircraft. Abdul Nasili Lubama for UBC. And over to Chak Kaliba, where murders have been rampant. Uh, State Minister for Land, uh, Dr. Sam Mayanja, has ordered police and Hoima RDC to arrest and charge Awan Mujenyi Yesero for alleged land grabbing and murder in the villages of Chak Kaliba A and B in Hoima town. Residents of Chakaliba villages and surrounding areas in Hoima town have complained to the state minister for lands, Dr. Sam Mayanja, that a rich man known as Mogen Yesero is evicting them from their land and that whoever tries to stop him will die. These offers, they are families which have got freehold titles. And that's why we are saying the conflicts in this area, Chakaliba and Katugu, have been fewer by Yosef Mugenyi, with intentions to grab our land. These titles are dubious, riddled with falsehoods, and there's no way a same piece of land could have had two locations. Local leaders confirmed to the minister that over 14 cases have been filed against Mr. Mugenyi. Cases as one fifty nine, twenty nineteen. A complainant Haru Kanyanga Edward, Nuam Guruso Morozera, Kaitum Tavan, Sai Vizekiro in the next worker, Bamusara Hevikia. He was slaughtered.
so ejo eh, reference ku kubanza reference ya kabiri eri eh, nayo hoima police station CRB 479 stroke 2021 nayo complainant omnyoro isingo masolomon offense musango gwobu isingo marowan taro na umusango gwobu isi na mutabani we nawe akamuita mugenyi direct ya musara ya muita minister mayanja ordered DPCs and local security officials to search for Mr. Mugen Yesro so that he can answer to the allegations. Any directives and orders are given on the criminals. It's also not a kid. Maybe I'm going to be in Kampala. I'm Kampala and I'm going to be in Kampala. Those who evict August 2013, they should be prosecuted in accordance with the law. And I've told them the law is very clear. Trespass, law for, uh, threatening violence, malicious damage to property, whether you do it directly I, or as accessory before the fact or accessory after the fact. So he should be arrested. And the law is there. Mogeni, who is also a prominent lawyer, is said to have fraudulently obtained land titles in all the affected villages. The minister ordered the immediate cancellation of the land titles he acquired in the areas. If the transaction was void, then the titles were void and therefore a nullity. Accordingly, I'm passing the file to the Commission on Land Registration to engage the process to cancel. After the minister discovered that Mr. Mugenyi illegally acquired the land titles through the help of the land office in Hoima, he warned the district land officers that they would be held accountable for the fraud involved. Benon Mukwaya, Jamil Sekaja, UBC. Now in the area of gender nurturing, the director of NRA mobilization, Rose Mary Seninde, has emphasized the importance of recognizing and nurturing the potential within each individual regardless of their gender. The director in our immobilization, Rosemary Senide, has observed the continued growth and resilience of St. Lawrence schools despite the passing of influential Professor Lawrence Muchivi. When the late Muchivi passed on, I thought these schools were going to go to tatters. But surprisingly, the schools have grown even stronger and bigger and better. And that alone is not because this young girl is very strong, but because the grace of God has worked. Seninde recognized the significant contributions of St. Lawrence School's administration, highlighting the instrumental role in program planning and implementation. I know, and I have no doubt, even when you complete your education, you are not going to be the type of students who are going to look for jobs because St. Lawrence has prepared you so well, you are so brilliant, and you are very smart, not only by your uniform, but even upstairs. So we believe you are going to add value to this country. She highlighted the transformative impact of the new curriculum, emphasizing its practical and experiential approach to learning. But I want to tell you that His Excellency so that our students get a challenge. When they complete school, they go to the streets to look for jobs. And yet, you have the knowledge, you have the arms, God has given you the brain, you have the legs, you are not disabled. And then you go to the street to look for a job. You students of St. Lawrence, I believe you are going to be different. I want you to be unique. Maria Justin Tulina, the director of St. Lawrence Schools and Colleges, urged students to remain humble and diligent in their pursuits. What has made us be able to move on is the strength of the Lord, first of all. Secondly, the Lord was able to train, to train and see that if he's not around... This candidate at all level had nine aggregates and the, the, that was London College. Yes, they are still having the learners at heart. You see them, 
up. Then the best, second best overall had 19 point, I mean 18 point, sorry, 10 point, 10 aggregates. And that was from which campus? So academy took position number two at all level. But overall, in the whole country, in the best schools in the country, academy featured greatly in all level. Saranan Tongo Mubuke, a member of the Board of Directors, acknowledged the tireless efforts of teachers in guiding students towards academic success. I know things have not been easy, but you have stood with us and you've been able to uh, push for the good grades. Thank you very much. Uh, our dear parents, I cannot stand here and forget to thank you for entrusting us with your students. Uh, the Thanksgiving ceremony served as a reminder of the power of unity, perseverance and faith in achieving remarkable milestones. So that Kaye, UBC News. Fred! Osmosis. Freddy, Freddy! <laughs> Fred Dola, my boss, CEO of Inojo, the general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source Osmosis. of the Nile. I don't have money today. Just a polite loan of 200 you get to stock my shop. The signs and symptoms of success. The bank commander, not the bank tailor. Why hassle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're so tingy. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. The government of Uganda and the Uganda Bureau of Statistics is calling upon all stakeholders such as the chief administrative officers, city mayors, resident city commissioners, city clerks, city and division councillors, wards and LC chairpersons, as well as the residents and business communities to cooperate with the UBOS field teams as we embark on advanced preparations to conduct the national population and housing census on the 10th of May 2024. The census will be at 10-day exercise to obtain statistical data and information that will be used for planning and policy formulation including information on 1. How many we are 2. Where we are 3. How we are living 4. What we own and 5. Where we access services from. The Uganda Bureau of Statistics has now started listing of households and mapping in the 11 cities of Arua, Fort Porto, Gulu, Hoima, Jinja, Lira, Mbale, Masaka, Mbarara, Soroti, and in the Greater Kampala, comprising of Kampala, Wakiso, and Mukono districts. For more information, please call 0755 342 128 or 0773 342 128. This message is brought to you by the Executive Director and Census Commissioner, Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Census 2024. It matters to be counted. Are you planning or in the process of traveling abroad for work? Using irregular channels to find and travel for work abroad often seems cheaper and faster, but you risk being trafficked, mistreated, or forced to do work you did not agree to. Using proper channels is safer, offers more protection, and better access to support services when problems arise. Do not be deceived. Choose the proper channels. Always verify all information before traveling abroad for work by contacting the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, your local district labor office or DSOS office. You can also visit EEMIS website on eemis.mglsd.go.ug. This message is brought to you by the International Labor Organization with support from the Government of Switzerland. Welcome back as we turn into the world of business. Minister of State for Transport, Fred Biamkama, has emphasized the necessity for individuals intending 
to operate heavy machinery equipment within the Ministry of Works to undergo comprehensive professional training bore hand. Uh, delivering this advice uh, during the commissioning of a handover ceremony of the Mechanical Engineering Training and Advisory Center, uh, METRAC, in Kakinzi, uh, Bututumola, sub county, Luero district. This for a long time. You should have already learned importance of maintenance from the commerce team. Please keep METRAC properly maintained for sustainable development for your country. I often receive compliments on the quality of Japanese products. I am very proud of our products and have confidence in them. The quality is an outcome of delicate technology and highly manufacturer's skill. This project has all been about a collaboration with Japanese companies and experts. I have no doubt that Uganda will increase the quality of infrastructure with the outcome of this project as a foundation. The world of people are so blessed and uh, when you go back in history, the inner station we have here in Ruero, it was previously training wing for these operators. So now I think it was so wise through the Ministry of Works and Transport, the United government to say, let's go back where we have got our blessings for training from. So now we believe whoever will qualify from here will go and do wonders in the works they are going to do. Why did we choose to put a grant on a grant of 2.34 million dollars on a, a facility that going to train operators? Because government is investing a lot of money in procuring these road equipment units. Because this training has been mobile, they go to regions, they train. Now government said let's do reinforcement we have one place where we can train these people. And it's, it's money to provide the new equipment. And even the owner of what he talked about, additional equipment. But we need to train these people on how best they can handle them. And that's the main purpose of this facility here. Sina miu kusaya bana masomero. Tibite kwa kuka rubiri zana katono. Eno kusimba nyiri limpa mvu. Kenu karipa kenu kabibuka. Sima ya kuzunga na banka siripsi. Ah ah ah. Kati osomuro kusasula school fees zomu ana wo. Ateno kula na ebila rantoko. Kusimu ye yomu ngalo. Echo kula changu nyo. Nyiga wanyizi sita. Emu mkaga tanu. Sita munana not hash. Huko merinebi kula giridua. Humu kuzese apu ya MTN momo. Hati kati okula churu waliru. MTN Mobile Money Uganda Limited Erunga Miswa Bank and Kuruya Uganda And into the world of sports. After victory in the just concluded All Africa Games in Accra, Ghana, the Uganda rugby team has been hosted to an awards dinner. Sponsors Nile Breweries awarded the two teams with 100 million shillings. Let's hear more in this report. It was joy and celebrations in the room as the Uganda rugby teams presented gold they won at the just concluded All Africa Games in Accra, Ghana. Dignitaries, including Government Chief Whip, Hamson Oboa, National Council of Sports, and fans were present as the team paraded the gold medal they won. We commit as government that we will continue also to put in place new sports infrastructure and His Excellency the President has already committed on two, that is Oima and Akibwa Olympic Stadium in Lira. Oima is a mark to be constructed by a Turkish company. Meanwhile, Akibwa is a mark to be constructed by an Egyptian company. And all are multi-purpose sports arena. 
at Velocity Bay in Chanja. Nell Special, the sponsor of the Uganda Rugby Union, rewarded the Uganda Rugby Crane Sevens and Lady Rugby Crane Sevens national teams with 50 million Uganda shillings each for winning gold in Accra, Ghana. I'd like to take a chance to, to thank uh, the government of Uganda NCS for the great work they are doing to the Rugby Sevens. And uh, tonight special, thank you very much for also the, work, the great work you've been, you've been and uh, to the gold medalists as well. Thank you for always staying in the fight and yeah, fighting for whatever we want. And uh, to also the girls, thank you for winning and uh, for the victory. The winning bonuses were presented by Nile Special Brands Manager Rogers Sali. The government of Uganda, represented here by the National Council of Sports and Chief Whip, expressed their commitment to supporting sports with an increased budget. Nile Special, I want to salute you in a very, very special way. Because the biggest deal that was signed was at the exit of my tour of duty as Minister of State for Sports. I want to extend salutations to you for complimenting the hip of the government, for supporting the train, both rugby, the male team, and the ladies team. Uganda rugby teams went undefeated throughout the African Games campaign, marking Rugby 7's debut at the event. Additionally, Nile Special launched a new promotion called the Unmatched in Gold campaign, offering revelers with a chance to win gold medals by sharing Nile Special with friends at selected hangouts in Kampala City. That's all we had time for. Thank you so much for choosing us. My name is Patricia Lukoma Mpango. I have to say it's a good night, but our programming continues.